Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. We're going to pick up where we left off last time with significant figures. Last time we talked about how to measure them, and now we're going to talk about how to use them in math equations, which is the extremely important skill. And so by the end of this lesson, you should be able to successfully work through both addition, subtraction, and multiplication, division, significant figure problems. Um, we'll talk about how to calculate an average and also how to work through larger math problems. By the way, until I get professional voice actors to help out with this, uh, I'm just going to scroll through clip art character dialogue. If you think it's witty, enjoy it. If you think it's a waste of time, uh, skip ahead, I guess, in the video. <laughs> um, anyway, so significant figures for multiplication and division problems. Extremely straightforward. Students don't usually mess this up because all you have to do is count the number of sig figs in each of the numbers and your answer can only have the same number of sig figs as your least significant piece of data. So I often say think, think of the weak link. A chain can only be as strong as your weak link. And so my answer here can only have two sig figs. So 23.5888. Uh, you keep the two, you keep the three, that's two sig figs, and then five rounds up. Remember, round, don't truncate. Um, and then this should conceptually make sense uh, because remember what sig figs are. Sig figs are things you've measured against a scale. So let's say, uh, for the sake of argument, you had only one sig fig in one of those pieces of data. Well, what does that mean? That means on a scale, you uh, were at the limits of the resolution of your equipment. And, and frankly, you guessed that number against the scale. And so you really can't put much credence in your answer if you're at the edge of the resolution of your equipment, and that's reflected in the answer. So if you wanted more than two sig figs in this answer, you'd have to go back and measure that first number on a better piece of equipment. Now, what might seem counterintuitive is that students mess up addition subtraction way more, way more than they mess up multiplication and division. I mean, these are chronic, consistent errors all year long. And again, it's because I don't think they've taken the time to conceptually understand what's going on. So if we line these three numbers up, uh, a lot of you would simply add those up and say 223.258 and, and not even bat an eye. Uh, but take a look at what's going on here. Um, you don't really know that that's the answer. Because if you take a look at this, there's a lot of numbers that you never bothered to measure. Everything past the decimal on 71 and everything past the zero on 52.0 weren't measured against a scale. And so you can't say with any confidence that the answer is actually 0.258 because you don't know what those question marks were. They could have all been fours or 499. And so what we need to do is when you figure out uh, where the resolution of measurements runs out, the first one to run out, in this case 71, you draw a line and then you pretty much give up on everything past it. You round it. Two rounds down, so in this case the answer is 223. And so if you think about addition and subtraction from the point of view of the resolution of the equipment, it makes sense that you have to drop numbers. And so, uh, so to summarize, again, your answer cannot exceed the resolution of your, I guess, weakest data source or weakest piece of equipment. and 1980s reference. <laughs> um, it's the same thing for averages. Um, treat an average like an addition subtraction problem. All right, because it starts like that. Okay, so if I added up these three numbers, I'd get a legitimate answer of 14.23. Now, you probably noticed that addition subtraction problems, we didn't count sig figs, and the answer can have a different number of sig figs than any of the uh, input data. So 14.23 has more significant figures than anything in there, but that's legitimate uh, calculations there. So that's why we don't really worry about counting sig figs for addition subtraction. But we do run into a problem when we want to do an average, because if we divide this by 3, and remember, 3 is a counting number, so it doesn't limit, uh, I end up with 4.743. And so it doesn't make any sense that the resolution or the precision of my answer is going to exceed the equipment that the measurements were taken on. And, and so, obviously that doesn't make sense, so you do the same thing you did for addition and subtraction. Draw your line and round it. Three rounds down, so my answer would be 4.74. And finally, keep an eye out for long problems.
If you have a series of multiplication problems or a series of addition problems, if it's all the same factor label rule, you're not going to run into any problems. Where it gets a little tricky is if you switch back and forth in a problem. Uh, you might be tempted to figure out sig figs in the middle. Like, for example, you might be tempted to do the subtraction problem, figure out the sig figs for that, and then keep marching on. The only problem is that that leads to what's called cascading errors. Now, a lot of times this won't make a difference, but sometimes it will. And I picked out a situation that obviously uh, shows where this could run into problems. And so really all you do is you keep an eye out for those transitions between the two rule sets, and then you figure out what the intermediate sig figs would be without actually rounding. So for instance, uh, when I subtract those top two numbers, I would actually only have one sig fig left based on sig fig rules. And so uh, I don't round at that point. I say, well, okay, let's, let's put that in the back of my head and keep going. And so then I have a division problem, and now it's one sig fig and three sig figs, so my answer could only have three sig, I mean one sig fig, 0 0.03. So those rules should get you through most significant figure problems. They certainly aren't exhaustive rules of every sig fig situation, but they are really what you need for most problems. Um, but you do need to practice. Practice, practice till you're confident and you're consistently getting the right answer, especially for addition subtraction. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and I hope that you have a great day.